Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today I'm going to talk about eternal life. Amen. And to start that out, I'm going to plug into where Willie was last week, is there life after death? Kind of goes hand in hand, and you'll see where I'm going when I, when I say that. But right now, let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer about it. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your salvation, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you give us the opportunity to hear your word, Lord. And not only hear it, Lord, but then to go out and do your word, Lord. We thank you that you care so much about us, that you give us the word to live by. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, what I was saying is, um, is there life after death like Willie asked last week? Yes, there is. He shared the scriptures and he shared about it. Now, personally, I performed the funeral services for my father. I performed funeral services a couple weeks ago for another young lady. Now, when I do that, I have to know a little something about that body, who lived in that body. I have to know, were they a Christian or not? But see, when you speak about eternal life and where that spirit is gone, you've got to know the answer. And so when Willie says, is there, is there life after death? There is. But there's a choice you make where your spirit's going to spend that eternity. And when you speak about, the scripture says, absent from the body, present with the Lord, well, the world thinks that's for everyone. But see, that's reserved for the Christian. And I'm sorry to say this, but everyone doesn't go to heaven. But that's the worldview today. But I'm sorry, when this physical body stops breathing, your spirit's going one of two places. And unless you made the choice that Jesus Christ is your Savior, it will not spend an eternity with the Father. That's not my opinion. That's the facts, what the book says. I'm going to read to you. Don't put this on the board yet, Willie, but we'll do that in a minute. John eleven twenty five 25, and 26, and I'm going to be out of the NIV today. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. See, the Lord's salvation begins a new life. When you accept Christ as your Savior, a new life begins in you. Not only after physical death, see, but now. When you accept him, a new life begins. With resurrection, true life begins. Then he goes on to say, He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. See, you'll never experience spiritual death when you accept Jesus as your Savior. If you don't accept Jesus as your Savior, your spirit is going to live in eternity in hell. That is the facts. Go ahead and put it on the board, Willie. John eleven twenty five and 26. In the NIV, please. Again, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. I'm waiting on you, Willie. Let me know when you got it. NIV? Okay. Well, let me just tell you, the next, in the verse 26, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die, that's not the last part of the scripture. Jesus asked that question there. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? That's the most profound part of that scripture to me. Do you believe this? We have to make a choice of what we believe. Jesus asked the question himself, do you believe this? So every one of us have to give an account. 
Do we believe this? Personally, I believe this. My hope is that you believe this. For your spirit to live in eternity in heaven, you have to believe that. Do you believe this? Go to John 5, 24 and 25. I'm going to read out of the NIV. I don't know if we have it up there yet, but John 5, 24 and 25. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. See, the believer no longer belongs to death. That's our salvation. When you accept Christ, you made the decisive action. And now that's been put in, in motion. In verse 25, I tell you the truth, a time is coming and has now come. See, that's not just a reference to the future, but in your life now. God gives life now to us. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who will hear will live. See, those who don't hear the voice of God and get converted, they're spiritually dead to God. And we all are by nature. That's why we're given a free will to choose. We have to choose. So eternal life. Again, when we speak of it, a lot of people speak of it in terms of Well, when you die, where are you going to spend eternity? Well, yeah, that's the fact. As a Christian, when when your body expires, your spirit goes to be with the Lord. But see, when you accept Christ as your Savior and you're born again, your eternal life starts then. What would we be to sit around and wait to enjoy our eternal life only when we die? Think about that. See, everyone's looking to the future. Well, I better accept Christ because when I die, I want to go to heaven. Well, no, I want to accept Christ now to enjoy the fruits of his life in me now. See, that's eternal life. I'm not planning on the day that I die to enjoy life. I want to enjoy it now. And that's what he's given us. Eternal life. I'm going to read Galatians 2.20, Willie. And again, I'm reading out of NIV, so just follow along with me. It should be pretty close. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Again, Christ dwells in the believer. And that's the gospel truth. That's what it's about. When you accept him... He dwells in you. He lives in you then. Again, the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If you're born again, what does that mean? You're not physically born again. You've already been born physically. You're you're having a life conversion when you're born again. I'm no longer living for myself, but I'm living for God. That's the conversion. That's the conversion. I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, see, we still have the flesh. Your spirit's spirit's fine, but see, we still got to deal with the flesh. 
I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So we accept Christ, our spirit purified. You're not going to get your spirit any more purified. But our soul and our body, that's still got some working. That's what this is for. To dive in his word and find out, how do I live for you, Lord? Thank you for salvation, but how do I live today for you? How will I live tomorrow for you? How do I forgive myself for how I lived in the past? And how do I go forward? It helps us overcome temptation. It helps us overcome the slippery slope, the lies, the fiery darts that the, the devil's throwing at you. Well, you think you're saved, but, you know, you still do some things. You think you're saved, but... I got some things in the closet that I'm going to bring out and show everyone about you. Tricks of the devil. Lies. So, this eternal life. Christ came and he died a physical death. And then he rose again. So Christ can't die again. So you, as a Christian, accept Christ, and then he, what, dwells in you. You cannot die. Your body's going to expire one day, but you cannot die. Do you get what I'm saying? He says, I'm going to give you life. You accept me and you get life. We cannot kill Christ again. He, he died. Charles Ferguson, my body's going to die, but see, I'm already living the eternal life. You as a Christian are already living the eternal life. You are enjoying the fruits of an eternal life now. You don't have to wait to enjoy life later. Enjoy it now. The decision isn't just to go to heaven. The decision is to enjoy eternal life. Now. Enjoy it now. We do face the world's view of the day about these things, too. It's very gray. Again, the concept is, well, when someone dies, well, he or she's in a better place. How do you know that? Were they saved? You see, we, the challenge is there. You don't want to make anyone, you know, you don't want to offend no one. But listen, if someone asks me to share, I've got to share the truth. I can't say, well... You know, our, our brother here, Steve, you know, he, wait a minute. I can speak about salvation, but I can't speak about where his, uh, that his spirit's in heaven. I can't say absent from the body present with the Lord if he said to me, I'm an atheist and I don't believe in this son of God. See, you got to be bold in this thing. It's the truth. If you don't think it's the truth, Sit around and not make a decision about where your eternity is going to be. I know the other place, because I read about it, you do not want to be there. Now what else happens to us when we get to spend an eternity? One day we're going to get a resurrected body. You know, it doesn't say that the resurrected body is for uh, the unbeliever. It's for the believer. See? I want to enjoy my resurrected body. Well, the way I do that is I believe in Christ. I'm saved. When I die, my body here expires. It goes back to the earth. My spirit's in heaven with God. And then one day, he's going to give me that glorified resurrected body that I get to enjoy my eternity in. 
I'm looking forward to that. But you know what really burdens me? And I wake up in the middle of the night thinking, what about my loved ones and friends who expired before me who will never get to enjoy a resurrected body? That their spirit is having eternity in hell. That's it. There's the two choices. It ain't this lovey-dovey feeling the world likes to put on you, that everything's okay, one-size-fits-all mentality. There is a heaven and a hell. That's why God tells us about it. Good people just don't go to heaven because they're good. And bad people don't go to hell just because they're bad. Christ said, believe in me. If you want to be with the Father, believe in me. That's the way you get there. John 10.10. 10. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. Now let me just stop right there. If that's all the devil has to offer to you, why are you playing around with him? Why would you want to hang out with him? He wants to kill you, steal from you, and destroy you. And by the way, he doesn't give a disclaimer saying, hey, by the way, if you stick with me, your spirit will spend an eternity down here where there's gnashing of teeth, torment day and night. He doesn't explain that to the people he's trying to seduce. But God explains it to us in his word. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, or more abundantly. Hey, see, again, he's not saying just so your spirit goes to heaven so you can spend eternity in heaven. Hey, I want you to have life now, more abundantly. This eternal life starts the day of your conversion. Full of joy and true happiness. When you're born again, an abundant life, a happier, fuller life, and that spirit life that you start to enjoy far surpasses the human element. You know, our human element, we're a roller coaster ride. But when you get the, the spirit of Christ in you and Christ is dwelling in you, there's a peace that passes all understanding. There's a joy that just continuously flows. You know, I love the questions. Sometimes people go to me, how can you be happy in the midst of the storm? Because the storm doesn't have nothing to do with my happiness. I'm enjoying the happiness. Don't let situations and circumstances and people take your joy and your happiness. Not even for a moment. You know, they want you to walk around in the circumstance with your head down. Well, I'm just down and out because I'm in the circumstance. I can't even look at you. I'm just looking down. The circumstances rule in my life. You know, I got a spirit, but I'm not letting my spirit tell me what to do. I'm just in the circumstance. And that's how lots of people walk around today. Burdened in their circumstance. But I say to you, if you have been born again, what are you playing games with the circumstances for? What are you playing around with what people think about you for? What are you playing around with the devil's fiery darts he's throwing at you? You have to lift your head up. And you have to proclaim, not just say, I'm a Christian. You have to proclaim. That I have been made righteous through Christ. The circumstance has nothing to do with me. I'll walk through the circumstance. It may be tough. And it might be sad. But it is not your eternal life. Circumstances don't have eternal life, by the way. Your spirit has eternal life. That's the message here. What are you doing about your eternal life now? It ain't just for, hey, listen, I don't know the time and day that I'm going to heaven. 
So what do you do in the meantime? You don't enjoy life? Or do you enjoy your eternal life? If again, at your conversion, remember, for me, that was when I was 11 years old. My eternal life began then. I don't know when the physical life's going to stop, but my eternal life began then. It's a different kind of preaching, isn't it? You just don't hear this. Everyone reserves it for when you die. It's not reserved for when you die. It's for you now. Remember, Jesus walked around on this earth in his resurrected body. He didn't just go to heaven and say, well, that's it, I'm done with them. I, I won't. He gave us the example. He was the example. He is the example. Enjoy life to the fullest. Don't get mired down in the clay. So, is there life after death? Yes, there is. There's an eternal life spent with the Father. And there's hell on wheels if you don't choose to be with the Father. Is this eternal life just for when you die? No. It is for you now. It is for you now. When you say, Christ, I accept you as my Lord, the Spirit doesn't wait 90 days, 6 months, 3 years. He dwells in you then. Right then. Right then. So why would you impede Christ on not enjoying your eternal life from that moment on? Well, see, he he asked me to come in you, and now I'm in you, and you're just, oh, hum. You're not enjoying me. You're not having fun with me. You're waiting on some other thing to happen to enjoy my life I've given you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Listen, use this vessel we have now for now. You want to show others something? Walk this thing out now. Well, I'm a Christian, but forget that but part. Just say I'm a Christian and because I am, here's how I live. Here's how I see life. Here's how I enjoy life. Again, it's not just reserved for when your body dies. And that's the mistake people get caught in. I want to get saved because I don't want to go to hell. That's good, but no, no. Let's get saved to enjoy eternal life from the moment you accept him as your Lord and Savior. That's true happiness. That's joy. That's how you get over the hurdles in life. Just because you become a Christian doesn't mean you can't sway back and forth. But see, when you get rooted and grounded in the truth, those things don't sway you much. Those circumstances don't mean as much as they used to. Those burdens don't slump you down like they used to. When you get that embedded in your body, in your spirit, in your mind, to know that, wait a minute, the living God is dwelling in me. The living God walks every step of my life out with me. I don't know how much power you could want in your life. That's the ultimate power. But yet our human element wants to distract us and think we can't enjoy things. Listen, the person who's got it the worst in this world can be happier than the most upright citizen in the building. How does that happen? That's right. When you know that you know that you know that you know that Christ is king, And because he shed his perfect blood for you to live, that you can start living. So I say live your eternal life. Now. It's not on hold. It's not reserved for later. It's now. It's now.
The saddest thing I say I see a lot of times is like I said earlier, when people are confused, well, they're in a better place now. And that vexes my soul. It really does. Because, see, I see so many people who don't know the truth. They're blinded for whatever reason. And sure, that's a warm, cozy, cozy thing to say everyone goes to heaven. But they don't. There's a free will that we're given to make the choice. And God cares about us so much that he gives us plenty of time to make the choice. And he waits patiently. He waits patiently for us to make the choice. So where are you at? What stage of this eternal life are you in? Are you waiting for some glory later? Or are you enjoying the glory now? Are you holding back from stepping into some things on faith? Or are you ready to just step out in them and enjoy them? Eternal life. Not just for when our physical bodies die. Remember, if you don't remember anything else today, remember that your internal life started at your conversion. Eternal life with Christ. I love it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm enjoying it now. I'm not concerned about when my body stops. I'm enjoying it now. See, my decisive action took place. I accepted Christ. Wow. Now Christ is in me. Now how is this thing going to play out? Well, if you sit on the sidelines and try watching it, you'll never see it. It'll go right on by. But if you start stepping out in it and enjoying it, you'll get the fruits of it, the benefit of it. If Christ died and said, I'm doing this for you. And we accept that, but yet we mock him by not enjoying the life he's given us. See, who wants to mock him? I don't. But see, we do it. Our human element mocks him. I could just see him pacing back and forth. Why aren't they enjoying this life that they've said they've accepted? What are my children waiting on? What are they looking at? But see, that's that old sin nature. Just covers the life we're supposed to lead and holds us back from it. Oh, but Charles, you don't understand. I mean, you look at you, you're dressed nice, you got it made, you a banker, you make money, you got it made. Whoa, whoa, got nothing to do with it. My circumstance has nothing to do with it. God's blessed me with a wonderful wife and wonderful children, but that's his blessing. That's his blessing. But I also got some stuff (laughs) that follows me and chases me that I got to fend off, turn around with my sword, wipe it. (laughs) I've got my things. Listen, I got to kick, kick back in the closet, get in the closet, nail the closet back up. But they don't impede my life. They don't dictate my personality. They don't interfere with my relationship. In fact, they help strengthen it. See, take the tools, take the tricks that the enemy uses against you and turn them against him. (laughs) You know, 
tell a trick on him. You want to fight with someone, fight with him a little bit. Sharpen your weapons. And say, Satan, I see you coming. I see what you're trying. But I'm going to turn your weapons against you. Get behind me, Satan. Well, he can't fight God. If you say that and that thing is in you, your spirit knows that if you speak the word against him, guess what he does? He flees from you. He can't affect you. But he waits in the shadows. And he waits for you to get a little proud. And a little bit, well, I got this thing under control now. And then he comes back with some friends. And he really lays a whammy on you. And you got two choices. Either you're going to fall and just hit rock bottom, or you're going to, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. (laughs) I am more than a conqueror through Christ. And I'm not hiding behind the door for you. I'm busting through the door, and I'm coming to chase you away from me and from my family. That's the boldness you have to use. That's the eternal life. See, eternal life is Christ in you. You ain't living out that Satan's life in you. You're living out Christ's life in you when you become a Christian. You're walking through this thing with power, with energy, with light, with truth. This ain't man's opinion. This is the truth. Well, that's just what you believe. I just don't believe it. See, I know it. I know it. I'd love to get in debates with people because, see, they can't debate me when I know the truth. Don't let them debate you when you know the truth. Don't let them trick you up into ideology. The truth is the truth. You know, there's other religions, even religion, even religion wants to muddy the waters. Even religion gives us false hopes. So don't even get caught up in religion. Get caught up in the scriptures. The answers are there. Different religions tell you things about life and death that have no word in scripture. They're made up concepts man decided to put on paper somewhere, not by God-inspired words. Don't get caught up in theology. Theology means nothing in this. I don't think uh, when Jesus went to the temple, I didn't think he went to theology school before he went there. Do y'all, do, I, don't, I never read that. Did y'all? I don't think he went studying. He boldly went in. And proclaim the word of God. So we don't hold back no more. We have an eternal life that has begun at our conversion. Don't wait on it. And if you haven't had that conversion, don't leave today without it. And if just, even if you have accepted Christ, but you know, God, I just, I just ain't enjoying this life. Do something about it today. Let your mind take a vacation and let your heart take over. Get your mind out of the equation. Let that spirit speak to you. That's what's dwelling in us. His spirit is dwelling in us. So don't think about it. Let's just do it and enjoy the eternal life. I think I said this before, you know, when, when my mom and, and my dad passed away, and yeah, I don't want to seem, you know, brass, but yeah, we do have our human element there. We do miss them. And we are saddened. But see, I didn't get stuck on that. Those same day, I was enjoying it. Because, see, I knew the glory. (laughs) I knew the glory. Listen, I'm in the glory, but they just took a step up the ladder and did some more glory. (laughs) They went into glory, glory. 
And I didn't want to impend him from that. I didn't want to keep him around one second more to enjoy in that glory. The closer you get to him, <laughs> the more glory there is. So walk your life now in that glory. Enjoy it now. Grasp hold of it now. Eternal life just isn't <laughs> the fact that you're going to spend eternity in heaven. Eternal life is now. 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 Enjoy it. Breathe it. Live it. And by the way, when other people with those circumstances come over there, don't let them pull you down. I mean, love them. Pray for them. But don't jump in the bowl with them. Just stay out of it. Stay out of it. See, that's what happens in our human element. We just get to chain reaction. And then you glum. Next thing you down, you down and out. It's just like when you have a physical ailment. The ailment is not you. It's a physical ailment. Don't claim that thing to be you. You know, I got this nagging back from where I pulled my back. It nags me still. It's nagging me right now. But it isn't me. I'm not grimacing and moaning and complaining about it. It's just there. And I know what to do about it. But it doesn't keep my joy away from me. It doesn't stop me from laughing and enjoying myself. It doesn't stop me from knowing that I am righteous in Christ and that by his stripes I've been healed. And don't let the world get on your case when you say that and they go, well, you're still hurt. Listen, man, I ain't talking about this body. I'm talking about me. My spirit has been healed. Get bold with them and let them know what you're talking about. These bodies don't mean much. That's why we get new ones anyway. It's temporary. I'm looking for the new one. You want a new body, son? You're going to get one. You know why? Because you accepted Christ as your Savior. That's why you're getting one. Better calm me down. Who is this God that cares so much about us that he gives us these things? And not only, listen, these temporary vessels, they weren't made to enjoy heaven, by the way. They weren't made to enjoy eternity. That's why he's given us that new one. You know, Jesus, in his physical body, his physical body as a human, it didn't go on. But his resurrected body is what he's in now. We've got a great hope to look for in that. A great hope to look for in that. So again, ask yourself where you are. Don't beat yourself up about it. But if you had not been enjoying your life and you're a Christian, take some time and get on your face. And say, God, help me. I've committed my life to you, but help me enjoy this life that you've said I have. Not the one that's awaiting for me, the one I have now. Enjoy this thing now. You want people to see you as a Christian? Enjoy yourself so they can see a joyful life when you walk up to them. You want more people to get the gospel? Let them see you coming from 50 yards away. There's something about that person. Look at them coming at me. I don't know about you, but I've seen that personally. I've seen the glow on people's face when they have sold out all the way. And they ain't living the old life, but they live in the new life. The born again life. The resurrected life. That he says, here I am. Do you want this life? Then get it. 
If you don't want it, don't get it. But if you want it, get it. It's here for you. It's here for you to enjoy. Don't get caught up in the worldview again. That's a slippery slope these days. We got, listen, we got pastors, ministers, evangelists. Listen, no one's safe. The fiery darts come to everybody. And so many of our leaders are turning to worldviews that are not scripture. Worldviews that have no meaning in God's word. Don't get caught up in those things. Don't get caught up in the worldview. Don't get caught up in that you're supposed to walk. If we have a recession, you should be recessed. Don't get caught up in that. You should be up all the time, not when it's always up. You should always be up. You know, a lot of people say it's easy to praise God when things are going good. See, I've always looked at it the opposite way. I like to praise Him when it's bad. I like to praise Him when it's bad. Because at my weakest, He makes me the strongest. And if you want to see people succeed, pray for them when they're at their weakest and say, you are strong. Because that's what God says. Eternal life. Let me tell you something. The world's missing it, and many Christians themselves are missing it. So get on board with it. Take it. Claim it. Proclaim it. See, it's not just good to know it. You got to proclaim it. And there's an action. You got to do it. If you never get out of the bed in the morning, guess where you at? In the bed. You have to get up, and you have to move and do something. Don't just say, you know, I'm willing to do God's work if you ain't willing to live God's life. Go ahead, work around all you want to, but if you just in a ho-hum state of affairs, you ain't living God's life. You live in your own selfish life. You live in the sin life. You still let the sin life take control of you. Do you think Christ enjoyed his life? I do. I think he walked it out as the perfect example. Could have struck his enemies down. But in the midst of his storm, he prayed for his enemies. I think he had some eternal life in him going on. I think he had a spirit in him that was speaking to him. And telling his physical body what it wasn't going to do. See, our physical body wants to strike out. Claim it all, kill it all. But the spirit will regulate you if you let it. And if you don't, there's prisons, there's jail cells, there's all kind of things that await you if you don't let that, that spirit tell your body what it's going to do. There's torment waiting day and night if you don't let that spirit tell the body what to do. Again, there's an eternal life. Your spirit is going to spend an eternity. It is not going to die. But again, the choice is, is it going to be an eternal life full of joy and happiness spent with the Father? Or is it going to be damnation? That's a question we all have to answer for ourselves. And you're not going to study your way through it. You're not going to get motivational speakers to tell you what to say or do. That's a relationship choice. See, there's a relationship we have with Christ. Let me tell you how high he thinks of us. Here's the world's view. Let's say it, angels. Angels. You know, we think of angels as these mighty angels, you know, wing, majestic, majestic. We put ourselves like we're subject to the angel. Listen, God didn't come back to redeem angels. He came back to redeem man. His fellowship is with man. So when you think you ain't nothing, think about what I just said. Wait a minute. Wait, I'm, I'm more than this. I, 
thought angels were mighty. Let me tell you something. You're mighty. You're mighty to God. You're, mighty. You're so precious that he spilled his blood for you. That's how important you are to him. Don't ever forget that. When the world's calling you one thing, just go back to what God's calling you. My dear beloved son, my dear beloved daughter, I have come for you. My hand is outreached for you. There's no hole deep enough to keep you from the stretched out arm of God. Don't ever believe there is. You're never too far gone to let him pull you out and give you that eternal hope. It's awesome to know. I guess you could say I'm a bold guy. <laughs> but again, I like the truth about what God says. I'm not where I should be in a lot of aspects in my life. But you know what? That's a sidebar, man. <laughs> That's, I ain't getting hung up on that. I've got something planted. I'm a Christian. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The rest really don't matter. I'll deal with what I got to deal with, but ain't nothing getting in the way that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Nothing's going to erase it. Nothing's going to rip the page out. The devil's going to lie to you and try to tell you that you have been erased, but you have not been erased. Don't get caught up in, in your transgression. Overcome your transgression. Overcome it. Just as he overcome the world. Just as he stepped on the serpent. That's what you do. You want to enjoy your eternal life? Step on those things when it's time to step on them. Tell Satan to get behind you when it's time to tell him to get behind you. And let me tell you something. When it's time to tell your gossipy friends to leave you alone, tell them to leave you alone. You know, when the internet has more attention about what to say about things than what God says, throw the computer out. You're going to believe on the computer, you're going to believe on the Bible. You're going to believe the motivational speaker, you're going to believe Jesus said, I am. There's one authority for me. Only one. There's only one authority for you. Whether y'all believe it or not, it's up to you. But I'm here as a man of God to tell you the gospel truth that there is a risen God. He said, God said, I will come redeem man to me. I'm going to shed my own blood. Because my creation is that valuable to me. I, he was seeking fellowship with us again I seek their fellowship again and I'm going to redeem them back so I can talk with them walk with them live with them awesome awesome we have an eternity reserved to spend with God Almighty I don't know what my appointment will be one day but I'm ready for it I don't know, I don't, maybe he's just sweeping up the gold streets, who knows. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm awaiting it anxiously. Well, Charles, it sounds like you're ready to die. I am. I've already died. I've died to sin, and I have been risen with him. I'm walking in that new hope and new glory. And I urge every one of you to do the same. If you haven't, Stop flirting with the world and what the world says about God. Just pay attention to what God says about God. He's the author of it all anyway. If you ever doubt it, just pull the Bible out and just, it's all right there. It's the greatest encyclopedia ever made. It's the greatest motivational speaker that's ever spoke. It's the greatest physician you'll ever visit. It's the best financial planner you could ever go to with how you want your life to go in your finances. It's the best job recruiter in the world 
You want to know where you should be working? Talk to God about it. If there's something out there that you think you don't have yet, talk to God about it. If there's something you think you need, talk to God about it. By the way, he might tell you, you just don't need that. That's right. It ain't always to get what you want. It's to get what you need. Need. Just like we need water to live and food for this body, we need God's word. We need his relationship. We need his hope, his salvation. And it's there for us. And I'm going to say it again. Your eternal life started when? At your conversion. The day you accepted him as Lord and Savior, that's when your eternal life began with him. It's not reserved just for when you, op- you lay down in that casket. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. No, you're present with the Lord right now. Right now. He says, I dwell in you. And he's not a liar. And if he dwells in you, again, you can't kill God. You might kill this body, but you can't kill my spirit. I'm sold out. No one's going to change my mind. The devil, he's coming. But I'm looking for him. I'm ready for him. I'm equipped for him. And you know what? I'm looking for others who might be a weaker vessel. If you want to do something, help those who are the weaker vessels that can't put up as good of a fight. And you stand in the gap for them. You know, you want to to do something for someone? Stand in the gap one day for somebody. Stand in the gap. And say, my brother or sister might not be there yet, but devil, I'm here. And you ain't getting to them. You're not getting to them today. And stand in the gap. Eternal life. Now. 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 Thank you.